Well, good morning, everyone. It's Dee Moss coming to you live from the physics classroom with a little experiment that I have set up that will let us look at the properties of standing waves today. A power supply that oscillates at a frequency that we can vary with the controls on the front. We've got a mechanical oscillator that vibrates up and down that is connected to a string. You can see the string is vibrating up and down. And at the other end of the string, we have a pulley and we have some weight connected over the end to produce some tension in the string. The length of the string is 1.79 meters. Now, I've adjusted the frequency to almost exactly 10 hertz. And what you will see if we now look at the vibrating string is there's not much in the way of an obvious pattern in the motion, but pretty much it's just sort of vibrating randomly at this particular frequency. Now, the frequency is about 32.9 hertz, which seems like a kind of a weird random number, but the string, it's actually a very nice special number, because now, if I look at the string, you can see there's a nice, stable, large amplitude motion, and there are points along the way where the string is hardly vibrating at all, where it's sitting essentially still. And then there are points in between where it's vibrating a lot. The points where it's not vibrating at all are the points that the textbook calls nodes, and the points where it's vibrating a lot are the points the textbook calls antinodes. And if you look at the length of the string, we'll see there are one, two, three, four, five antinodes between the two ends at this particular frequency. Now, as I change the frequency of the oscillator, you're going to notice that the pattern goes away for a while and then it's going to reappear in a different form and at a new frequency. If I'm careful, I can tune it in and make the amplitude get really big again, but with the node at a new place. There we go, now it's really big amplitude and the node has moved from where it was before. And now if we look at the length of the string, we have one, two, three, four antinodes instead of five. And the new frequency is 26.3 hertz. Now we've got a really big amplitude pattern, but now there are only one, two, three antinodes between the two ends. And now the frequency has been reduced to about 19.2 hertz. Now, we're down to only two antinodes, with one node in the middle, and the nodes on the ends. And now, the frequency is about 12.5 hertz. And of course, finally, the smallest number of antinodes we can have is just one between the two ends. And for this pattern, what I call the jump rope pattern, we're getting a frequency of about 6.4 hertz. We're ready to move on to the next part of the experiment where we change the mass hanging over the end of the pulley. So here we have the original pulley set up. It's a mass hanging over the end. And now we're going to come in and we're going to hang an extra mass onto the one that was already there. That's going to increase the tension in the string. Now we haven't moved the pulley, it's still in the same place. And so the length of the string is still the same, but we expect something different to happen in this part of the experiment. So we have a pattern of five antinodes again. One, two, three, four, five. But to do that, I had to use a different frequency now. Now, the frequency to get five antinodes is 43.4 hertz instead of the value we had before. So here's the pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six antinodes, and the new frequency is 52.5 hertz. So how close were we with our prediction? And that's our experiment for today. And for your post-credit scene, here I am, safely back in my kitchen, sheltering in place, and getting ready for the rest of my day.